Welcome back, everyone. It's now 2024, so Happy New Year. We had a week off last week, and Thursday just did not feel the same without Hot Mess, so I'm so excited we're back into it. And it's the new year. I really want to focus on, you know, keeping my circle small, keeping the people around me, people that I trust and people that I love and people that respect me and that I respect them. So today we're going to be talking about friendship, friendship breakups, how do you break up with a friend, or maybe you're the friend that gets broken up with. The reason I wanted to talk about this is one, because I feel like I went through a lot of friendship breakups this past year, and I have dealt with that in the past as well and it's really hard like it feels like an actual breakup with a romantic relationship sometimes i think even worse because your best friend is like you know your partner someone who's there for you or maybe it's not a best friend but maybe it's just like a friend in general like it hurts and i don't think it's talked about enough that like when you're dating a guy right if he is treating you poorly if he's shit you know you're gonna break up with him and there's a set term for that you know you're having like a breakup conversation they say to you basically like i want to break up you say i want to break up but like there's no term for that when it comes to girlfriends like you don't say like hey i want to break up with you or like i don't know it's like hey i don't want to be your friend anymore but like how do you do that and like what's the right way to end a friendship that's not serving you and I don't know I think that this is going to be a fun topic we have a lot to go over with this but first I wanted to get started with going over where I'm at some life updates for the new year so I did make some new year's resolutions not a ton because I feel like you always make new year's resolutions and then by like February, you forget that you had them. So mine, I kind of kept it pretty simple. For my New Year's goals, I have this journal where I like write everything in and a lot of my New Year's resolutions are more like goals. So like I'll set goals for myself for the year because I actually did this last year with my 2023 goals. And I think we get caught up so much that like you forget where you are in life. So like you, you know, complete one task and you're so focused on like getting to the next one and I think it's nice to have like a set list and like go back and see how much you've accomplished because you forget the little things that you've accomplished and they're important and it was really really cool to check off my 2023 bucket list I completed a lot of my goals almost all of them so I made a new one for 2024 and those are more like aspirational goals in like life and work and as for my new year's resolutions i really want to start going to therapy more i have been a few times in like the past couple of months but i want to start going like every week maybe every other week i don't know nothing's like necessarily wrong but i just think therapy is so helpful and eye-opening and i don't know i think it will help me grow as a person so therapy is on there Weirdly enough, number two, I wanted to start taking dance classes again because I used to be a dancer and I miss it. It was so much fun and a good workout. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I should find like a dance studio in Miami that I can go take some dance classes. So if you see Big Al dancing, (laughs) mind your own business. I'm definitely very rusty and like will be horrible, but I think it'd be a fun workout. And then my third resolution, which... I'm doing kind of with Braxton, my boyfriend. So we will often at times like lay in bed together and just talk and like stay up until like one or two in the morning. And he has to get up so early. Like it's not great. So we decided to start putting our phones down at like 11 p.m. And we already did it a few nights. And I woke up at like 8 a.m. bright and early. I was feeling great. It makes such a difference going to bed at like 11 p.m. versus 1 a.m. because if I go to bed at 1 a.m. I'm trying to like get myself out of bed by like 10 11 in the morning and I still can't do it so that's been good helpful I think like off the phones because I'll sit there like scrolling on TikTok so that was kind of our like resolution to work on together something else i've been doing which is for the month of january if you're following me on any social media you've probably seen me posting about this but i'm doing the 30 hard which is technically just there's this challenge like the 75 hard this whole like diet workout thing for 75 days but i was like 
I could not do 75 days. Like that's not in the cards for me. So I posted, I was like, I'm just going to do 30 days because Big Al's not doing 75. And basically the rules are like work out twice a day, a gallon of water a day, no alcohol, like read 10 pages a day, keep yourself on like a diet of your choice. And I am basically like always traveling. So if you guys watched the last episode when I named all the trips of last year, I'm traveling around a lot. So it's not really like maintainable for me to do something like this or I don't know, even like get myself to the gym regularly. Like I have just been so over the place with the gym and like eating and I don't know, this past year has been, (laughs) it's been a whirlwind, but I've basically like kind of messed up my whole like health schedule I feel and when I say I want to like get in shape that doesn't mean like oh I want to like lose a bunch of weight because I think people were confused and they were like well you like you're skinny like you don't need to lose a bunch of weight and that's like not why I'm doing this like for me getting in shape is like feeling good feeling healthy like I want to be able to literally go on a walk without like getting a cramp because last week I was walking with Kristen and I was like oh my god like I have a cramp like oh I'm like bent over in pain like I just was like not in shape like I didn't feel good I didn't feel like my muscles were like mm. I just wasn't feeling myself so we're getting in shape this month and I'm not traveling for the month of January I think I'm only maybe gonna go to New York for a few days to shoot something really exciting for work, but then I'll be back in Miami. I don't think something like this would be attainable for me at any other month in the year because I am traveling and just like super, super busy. So I decided while I have a month at home, let's get right, health and wellness. I'm going to the gym, but like, I mean, I'm only on day five right now and like, I'm like, my body is sore but i do feel good and one of the big things that people keep asking me about is like the alcohol no alcohol part of it i would love to have a glass of wine at night or like i'm going out with my friends i would love to have a drink but like i'm okay like that is probably like the easiest part for me i feel like i think the working out twice a day is the hardest part because that just takes a lot of time i don't know the alcohol it's fine like i went out with my friends last night and i didn't drink and The only thing I'll say is that like, it's so weird going out when you're sober and like witnessing everyone else. Like I almost was getting the ick for like me going out because I was like, wait, it's just like everyone in a room, like small talking, but like they're drinking. So I don't know. I felt so like kind of socially awkward. But then once I like got past that initial hump, I just kind of was like, Alex, like no one knows that like you're not drinking right now and that's not a weird thing that you're not so like just be yourself like I don't know why I went through like a weird little like mental thing where I was out and I was like oh my god I can't talk to anyone right now but honestly it was great and I came home I did my skincare routine I woke up feeling great no hangover so I don't know I I don't think it's that bad and I was just sipping on like club sodas with limes because that's another thing that like when you don't want to drink when you're going out like there's nights before where like I don't want to drink I'm going out or I've had like one or two drinks and I'm like I'm over this and everyone like badgers you to drink they're like come on just drink just have fun so like I feel like my tip for that is just like put something in your hand and just like let people like be because I don't know I think people need to stop forcing like people to drink when they're going out if they don't want to drink That's my one thing I'll say about that, but I'm not really worried about the alcohol part of it. Yes, I will be so freaking excited to have a drink when this is over, but like, I don't think I'm gonna die. I'll be fine. My roommate Kristen is actually also doing the 30 hard with me and she's in Costa Rica right now, but she's coming back and then I'll kind of have like a little workout buddy, someone to go on walks with. Some people on social media are very, very mad at me because one, I'm doing this like 30 hard thing and I didn't really, I don't know, I just post about my life. I'm like, hey, I'm doing the 30 hard like this is what I'm going to be doing this month. Like if anyone wants to follow along with me and a lot of people have been following along, which is so great. But then some people are literally so mad. Like I didn't mean to make this like its own challenge, but I don't know. Now it's like the Earl girls, we're we're doing it. We're getting back in shape for January. I don't know. Some people are very, very triggered by that. I think like the 
health and wellness and like cooking people on social media scare me because I'm like, uh, I'm just trying my best here. Like I'm just trying my best. I was cutting an onion the other night because one of my goals with like the diet part is I'm not really restricting myself. Like it's kind of like, you know what, get groceries, eat healthy, cook. I'm restricting myself from Uber Eats because I Uber Eats way too much, way too much way too much so (laughs) no uber eats for me this month and i've been cooking which is great but like i posted a video cooking and i was cutting like with a serrated knife an onion and everyone was like oh not the serrated knife not the bread knife with the onion i'm like i honestly don't know i feel like i use that knife for everything like uh, the cooking and fitness people scare me love you so much but like i don't know everything that's not my niche and my last thing i'll say about this is I feel like, I don't know, you know when (laughs) you get a boyfriend and like you kind of just like let yourself go a little bit, like you get very comfortable, like I feel like when you're single, you're like, all right, like on my shit, like we're looking hot, here we go. I feel like people call it, it's like you gain like boyfriend weight or whatever. I feel like I've just been like too comfortable recently. I'm like, you know what? I am just not feeling myself. Like I just have not been feeling good and it's regardless of like any guy, like I just want to feel good and hot for myself if that makes sense so i don't know if anyone else is on that wave with me in for 2024 looking good feeling hot for ourselves out for 2024 looking good feeling good for a guy we're doing it for ourselves 2024 is our year here we come we're starting off the year in shape feeling good keeping our circles small and keeping people around us that make us feel good and lift us up so that's why i really want to talk about this whole friendship debacle in this episode we're starting off the year with a clean slate and maybe you're not maybe you're like wait i have not been starting off on a clean slate because i do feel like i'm stuck in a weird friendship that i kind of want to get out of or maybe it's not serving me the right purpose but we are going to go over all of that in this episode so let's get into it okay friendship i don't even know where to start I don't want you guys to take this as like drama or anything other than like I'm just telling my like personal experiences with friends. I always kind of struggled with friends growing up like that was a big thing for me and my sister Ashton like she found her friends in kindergarten and they are still her friends to this day and like that was not the case for me in middle school. Oh no I could not get a friend to stick around like it was actually a joke that like if I hung out with a girl and they came back to hang out with me a second time, my dad would be like, oh my God, like, we're so surprised to see you again. We're surprised you're still hanging out with Alex. Like, I don't know what it was. Uh, Middle school was like not great for me with friends. Then going into high school, I went to a high school that was like probably 30 minutes away from where I went to middle school. And I just wanted like a new start, new experiences. I think a lot of this had to do that I was like not confident in myself I was just like I don't know I was like shy almost but like I wouldn't show that I was shy if that makes sense so like I got into like a big friend group in high school and a lot of them like still friends with them but in the beginning like I remember I was the friend that like we would sit around at like a table and like I would say something and everyone would just like keep talking over me like I had no voice that was something I really struggled with like I always just thought that everyone hated me and that's probably because I dealt with like bullying or whatever in middle school so like I just had no confidence when it came to friends like I distinctly remember just like being the friend in the group that just felt like scared to speak up and talk and I felt like if I did everyone like didn't care what I had to say or was like laughing at me and sometimes those insecurities will like still come back like weirdly enough I had like a weird anxiety spout last year where I was like really in my head about everything and all of a sudden I'm like in my house my college house with my friends and I was like I don't know like I just feel like you all hate me and they're like Alex what and I I don't know but I did used to struggle with that a lot until probably the end of high school I think I started to like find my confidence find my voice and I think that helped me a lot with friends I'm not really sure what I was so afraid of but I don't know I just felt like I didn't have 
a voice in the group ever like I felt like I was kind of just like the shadow sitting there that like it didn't matter if I was in the group or it didn't matter if I was out of the group and the second that I like found confidence in myself and I was like okay here's who I am like I don't really care if people like me or not is when I just started to be a little bit more integrated and I would speak up more and I felt like I was more of like a leader in the group not that anyone needs to be like a leader or a follower but I just felt like I was able to speak (laughs) but I think confidence we can talk about in a whole episode of itself because that's a whole nother topic but being secure with yourself is then gonna allow you to like have good friends and have good people around you you're allowed to be yourself and you shouldn't be scared that your friends are gonna judge you and if they are judging you then you know you're not hanging around the right group of people and now really the gist of this episode is like maybe you have a friend and they're just like not healthy for you and there's different types of friends and i think different points in your life when friends are important or important in different ways like i will say i graduated college this past year and i had a lot of friends in college that were like going out friends like i never saw them more than like we're pre-gaming together at my house and then going out to the frats and i think that's okay and normal but past college i've tried to kind of just keep the people around me like who I want to hang out with when I'm not going out and like who I'm facetiming and texting like with constant updates of my life back to what I was saying before about like a friendship breakup those are hard like how do you even orchestrate a friendship breakup and I had a few friendship breakups this past year and then I've had friendship breakups in the past and I've gone about it in many different ways I've you know, been the breaker upper, but I've also like gotten broken up with and it is so hard and I've (laughs) done it in a few different ways and I'm still not really sure what is the best way, but I'm going to go through with you guys like a few different scenarios of ways I've gone about it because maybe there's someone that like you like as a friend, right? But like they value you as a best friend and maybe you don't see that in your eyes. If that makes any sense of what I'm saying like I've had people before be like this is my best friend in the entire world like she's my best friend and I'm like you barely even know me like I like you and I like hanging out with you but like you barely know me and like I necessarily wouldn't value that person as a best friend and I don't know there's this awkward kind of line where it's like maybe you don't hate someone and you like don't mind them at all and they are like someone you would like to go out with but maybe they're not someone who you want is like your best friend's sister, if that makes sense. And I think girls and girlfriend groups, it can get so toxic. And I'm not saying that I've been the perfect friend my whole life. Like there's definitely points in my life where I've been a bad friend. Now that's something I try not to ever do and not to ever like turn on my friends or talk shit about my friends. But like, I would be lying if I said like I hadn't done that before and not in like an evil or malicious way ever but I think like I don't know life gets to you and like you get caught up in things life is all about growing and experiencing and learning and something like I have truly valued since I've like been in college is my friendships and no matter like boyfriends whatever like your girls are going to be there at the end of the day to have your back you want to surround yourself with someone who has the same values as you and like I have had friends just completely like disrespect me or do something that I find super disrespectful and I have just had to like cut them out because I'm like I just I don't know like as much as you can say like I'm sorry you just kind of see those qualities in that person and I've just been like that's not someone I want to surround myself with but let's get into the different ways of which (laughs) I have kind of tried to like separate myself from a friend and it's hard it's definitely actually harder than breaking up with a boyfriend because i don't know i'm like boyfriend like cut off out like maybe they're toxic i don't know you go back a few times but then you're like you know what it's not happening like you just want to believe that a friend is different like I don't know you hold such a high standard i think when it's like a guy and you're like oh they do one shitty thing like fuck them they're shitty but when it's a girl you're like oh but I don't know or like maybe it was just a bad day or something but it's like I don't know I've kind of tried to just be pretty like cut dry with that 
cut dry cut and dry i don't know the saying you know what i mean cutthroat <laughs> whatever basically i've just tried to say like you know what if you've done something to wrong me even if it's the first time like this is not someone that i want around me all the time one way i think to cut off a friendship or break up with a friend is start like ghosting them over time which i have done before but i definitely do not think that this is the way to go because i've had people before like i said just kind of show like their true colors and maybe it's not someone that i'm like oh you know like i don't think they're gonna be my best friend but you kind of just try to like distance yourself a little bit like you don't talk as much and it kind of fades out but then you're in a position where like you look like a bad friend because they're like oh well they just cut me off without saying anything like they just stopped talking to me like I don't think that's the way to go I've done that with some people I think that's more so in a spot where it's like someone is you know saying like oh my god they're my best best friend they're my best best friend and I'm like you literally I don't even think you know my middle name and that like I'll just try and kind of like creep away and like maybe not answer but like that's also just not the way to go because then again, you're like left in that position where it's like you look like a bitch because you have just like kind of stopped talking to someone else. And I've also been in that position on the other end of things where like someone has kind of just stopped talking to me. But I think a big thing is, especially with friendship and a lot of what you guys have wrote into me, which we're going to do what would Alex do at the end and like different scenarios is, you know, being self-aware, you know, if someone is not like answering me and like you know even reaching out first ever I'm like kind of self-aware and like okay maybe they don't really want to be my friend like maybe I will just back off and like I don't need to force me being their friend down their throat like if they want to be my friend like they'll mutually also reach out to me so I think like being self-aware in those situations um but I don't think that's ever the way to go in terms of just like kind of slightly stopping communication and like not really talking too much another thing I've done which this has had a few kind of like crazy scenarios but I like had a best friend from seventh grade all the way until college like best friend basically a sister would come on my family vacations with me like this person was just like my best friend and basically it was like, I think my sophomore year of college, she started hanging out with someone else. Um, she really liked her and kind of started like pushing me to the side. And I could see it for what it was. Like, I just also kind of took a step back. I can see that she's putting way more time and effort into this other person, not even really like integrating all of us to hang out. Like she kind of just like almost replaced me. I just kind of let it go. It is what it is. Like, that's okay, I guess. Like, I was really sad about it, but... I wasn't gonna like scream at her, yell at her. Again, I was trying to be self-aware. I was like, whatever, she wants to be friends with this other person, then like, I'm not gonna be your friend. And basically in the midst of this, I had gone through a breakup and I heard that my best friend, or I thought she was my best friend, had tried to set up my ex-boyfriend with her new best friend. For me, <laughs> I saw red. I was like, you know what, not happening. Like, I cutthroat here we go cutthroat that's what I was trying to say before I basically just called her I was talking to her I told her like why I was upset I was like hello like why would you do that she tried to like deny it but I don't know I just was like you know what it's not happening I don't really want to speak to you anymore and we stopped being friends and that was not as easy as it may have like seemed to be because I was like crying every night i even like months a year after this like friendship breakup i would sit in my bed crying and i'm like should i just text her should i just call her and i never did because i was like you know what if someone like didn't value me as a best friend like then that's not someone i should be with but you care for them and like you want the best for them and maybe you see something like going on in their life that's sad and you want to reach out but that like really just put a ton of distance between us. It was kind of like we would have some communication here and there, but it went from being like my best friend to basically like a stranger. And that I think if 
we could have gone back i wish i would have like sat down and like had an actual like talk with her more so than like me getting my feelings hurt and just being like you know what not a good friend like cutting them off and that's what i would do a lot and i will get into the like sit down talk part of this a little bit more but that was just really really hard for me and just an example of how like I was just so clear on like, if you don't wanna be my friend, then I don't wanna be yours. Going throughout college, you know, making a lot of friends that some I'm really close with, some I'm not, some are just going out friends. And my senior year or like maybe my junior year, I started hanging out with this girl. I don't think we ever got to the point of like, I would say like she was like my best friend over anyone in the world, but like she knew everything going on in my life. It was basically last winter. So like last December, January, I was going through a breakup and you know, she knew all the details of everything. And I had basically had girls DM me saying that like, she was at a bar saying like, oh, I'm Alex Earl's best friend and was telling them like, personal secrets about like my breakup how would these random girls know these details if they weren't telling the truth because that's something i've only told like a handful of people so i was like okay well that's really weird and like kind of unsettling so i kind of just started to like mentally take a step back because again this person was not like my best friend just someone i was like hanging out with a lot and would like talk to a lot and then i you know went out with this person and they were at a bar cursing slurring and i was like oh my god and like that for me i was like done like i think we had plans to like go out or something and this is something where i don't know because we weren't again like best best friends and i didn't even want an explanation the things that this person had done like just kind of reached a threshold in my mind where i'm like this isn't even like a sit down conversation a like i'm sorry or like whatever like if you're doing those types of things like morally like that's just not someone i want to be friends with at all i don't even want to like know someone like that i don't even want to follow you i don't want to be associated with you like to me that's just like not a good person and that was someone that like i literally called her i said like 15 seconds of like basically like please like i do not want to be your friend hung up the phone and like that was it and like she sent me a bunch of texts after and i just like never answered um <laughs> i'm not sure if that's also the right way to go about that type of situation but like for me that was so clear cut like i was never going to be friends with this person like the things i saw i was just like nah it's not happening like i will never no matter what i don't think i will be friends with this person so that one i don't know again not my best friend really like harsh cut off was just like this is not happening girl um did i look like a bitch probably but do i regret it no because after i've kind of cut contact with this person i've still heard like similar things go on and that's just not someone that i care to be friends with in the slightest so i don't necessarily regret that one i think i was definitely acting out of emotion like i definitely did not need to be that harsh and like be a bitch like that and call her and give her really no explanation but I didn't really care to and like i don't know if that's like really bad to say but like i just didn't care like i saw what i needed to see to like deem her as a bad person in my mind and maybe she's not maybe she's changed but like for me i just was like it's not happening oh my god this one's like a little like personal and <laughs> a little raunchy so sorry in advance but my friend and i came back from going out we were drinking, whatever. I'm laying on my bed naked because I don't know, I'm laying on my bed naked. Booty cheeks are out. And this person decides to like take a picture of me laying on the bed, okay? Not like cute, sexy pose laying on the bed. Like I'm laying there on my phone texting. My legs are like spread a little bit. My taco's out. And this person takes a picture of me. This person then texts this picture to NFL man my boyfriend now but like at the time was not my boyfriend i was kind of just like hanging out with him starting to hang out with him oh my god this person just texted a picture of me laying naked on the bed to nfl man i was like do not send that do not send that and this person hit send because they were like drunk and like whatever thought it was funny i don't even know how to describe how i felt in this moment like a mixture of like 
anger and sadness and like I just felt like taken advantage of and immediately I called NFL man because I was like I did not want him to think that I wanted this to like happen at all I was bawling my eyes out he felt so bad he was like oh my god he was like literally what are you dealing with over there he was like I'll delete it like no worries more so was just the fact of like I cannot believe someone did that to me and like oh oh my god that was bad I I don't think you guys understand like I saw red in that moment so yeah sent a picture of me naked without my consent not looking cute also like it (laughs) I need you guys to envision like this is not like a a cute photo that you want out there like this is me flopped on the bed like after going out like oh oh no 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 so that was um pretty bad for me and I was kind of like all right you're not my friend you're a freaking psychopath so goodbye but that has to go down as like the craziest most disrespectful thing anyone has ever done to me I think Like, what an invasion of privacy. Oh my God. We can laugh about it now, but definitely was not funny in the moment. And then there's another situation where you kind of just see someone over time and kind of see their true colors. And then you know that they're like, maybe not the best person, but like you're hanging out with them, you're friends with them. And once I was done with college and I graduated, I really just wanted to keep people around me who like I respected and like no would never like stab me in the back. And this past year particularly was very weird with friends because I got a following on social media and you know, some people like care about that a lot and tried to like slither their way back into my life. Like people who told me they didn't like me, they didn't wanna be my friend like six months prior. I don't know, I could kind of see right through that. And I had another friend where I'm at this point, I'm trying to be open and honest and like talk to this person and I would have talks with them. I mean, we had like a fight. I was like, I don't really like respect you. I don't think you're a good person and like not someone I really wanna be friends with. You know, we're going out together a lot and then they're posting like a week later, like this is my best friend, like me and my best friend. And I just was like, okay, so clearly like, I don't think you really care about like anything I said to you. You just kind of care of like, posing that we're best friends and I was struggling with this because I was like how do you tell someone that maybe you don't want to be like their best friend but you don't necessarily you know hate them and never need to see them again or never need to speak to them again but it's kind of like an addition of little things adding up over time that it's like you see someone's true colors and it's just like not someone that you really want in your like close close circle and like how do you translate that to this person like that's hard another friend topic that i want to talk about is giving people the benefit of the doubt and like i because i've been like a friend before that felt kind of excluded and i don't know never felt like seen like i'm always one for like let's give them a chance we don't have to hate them we don't have to be mean why don't we just hang out with them give them a chance maybe they're shy right now maybe they're not being themselves and sometimes that's led to good friends and sometimes that's led to not so good friends there was someone in college that was kind of mean you know getting with people's guys like right after they would get with them was kind of snaky and i you know thought this person was kind of fun like we were all we would go out together but it was not like someone that I would trust like and we kind of knew that I was like okay well this is like more so of a a going out friend like this isn't gonna be someone that I'm like besties sisters with but I'm going to invite them like people change like we're young freshman year you know and yeah added them in like the group chat and stuff and some people don't change and some people are still kind of like snaky and suspicious and selfish Like, there's a type of person that will step on anyone or anything to, like, get their way, and it doesn't matter because they're so focused on, like, doing what's good for them that they don't really care about other people, and I think that's fine if that's the way you want to be, like, but that's not someone that, like, I personally want as a good friend because if someone is, like, so selfish with themselves and, like, literally just like sees their goals and like does not care like what happens or who they step on to get there. That's not someone that I'm gonna put all my time and energy into and that's not someone that I wanna hang out with. And then you're kind of left in a situation where you're literally like, how do I tell someone that like, I just 
don't want to be friends with them. That's kind of the truth. <laughs> like, it's just like you don't see them as a good person because you've seen things they've done and like what they've done to you and you have to like stick up for yourself at some point. Would a best friend have done that to me? Would a best friend have said that behind my back? Would a best friend have just like completely ignored anything I've like brought up and said and talked to you about? That's just something that like I've had to take into account this past year and then in turn had to like be selfish for myself and you know say like, you know, I just don't see us being that great of friends, but that doesn't mean that it's easy. And sometimes, you know, just because someone's like fun doesn't mean that they're a good friend. I don't think that I can like necessarily say that I really like 100% trust you because I've seen you like screw other people over. Um, you know, I've seen you like talk shit about people I'm friends with. And like, that's something that like just doesn't really like, fly with me. This person had one of our friends blocked friends like She's saying that this is like one of her best friends had her blocked from freshman year all the way to senior year and then is like upset that they're not friends. I don't understand. Like you literally had her blocked until we were on this like big vacation together. You only really started to like include these girls or be friends with them when it was like convenient for you. So now I'm at this point where I have done the kind of like cutting off of friends and it hasn't really like made me feel great. So I was like, you know what? I am a big believer, I think especially in like romantic relationships and friendships that you need to like sit down with someone and have a talk and that is like the scariest thing ever. Like I feel like when you're having like a fight with your boyfriend or sit down talk with them, it's not that scary but when you're like sitting down to confront a friend, like I don't know why, like that was the scariest day of my entire life. I, I did not want to do it. I was procrastinating it for so long but I was like, you know what? let's just sit down and talk like let's go over everything and I kind of went into that talk with like an open mind of like you know maybe we will be good friends again and you know there was like distance and I think that person was mad that I distanced myself without like saying too much and they felt very blindsided and I apologized because I said you know that's not how I meant to come off like I was kind of just trying to like protect my peace a little bit and I did not mean to like blindside you I apologized I took accountability for that this person like could not take accountability for anything that they had done and I also think that that's a big thing I don't think that anyone's perfect and anyone's ever gonna like go throughout their life being you know the most perfect friend and the most perfect person but you have to see where like all of that's coming from and friend groups can be really tough like when you're putting that many girls together like of course there's going to be drama at some points but I will say like my friend group like we really don't have drama I went into this talk basically being like you know what we can talk through these issues but like if we can't talk through the issues because you're not taking any responsibility then we're not going to get anywhere like this conversation was two hours basically like going in a circle i don't think we got anywhere at all friendship breakups feel like a real breakup it's just such a tough thing that i think a lot of girls go through and deal with and i've also been on the other end where i've had a friend get a boyfriend and you know one of my best friends and then just kind of like stop talking to me and like I don't necessarily blame her. She's like happy in a relationship, but then, you know, if you're not gonna give any time to our friendship and our relationship, then it is gonna like wither away. Like all of a sudden we don't know what's going on in each other's lives and like your best friend turns into a stranger. And I think that's something that's super, super important that like we need to talk about. When you get a boyfriend, you cannot ditch your friends because at the end of the day, when you're breaking up with this person, if you break up, if you don't happily ever after to you, but like when you break up with them, you're going to want a best friend there to like cry on their shoulder and to, you know, talk about it with. Like you cannot ditch your friends when you get a boyfriend. And I have, I'm like a boyfriend girl. Like I think I've always kind of had boyfriends just because that's, I don't know. I like being in a relationship if I'm going to like be with someone. And I always, always try my best to like prioritize my friends literally like I will try to do things more with my friends than my boyfriend sometimes and maybe that's not great and something I need to work on but like I think having good girlfriends around you is so so important and keeps you I don't know grounded and keeps you a good person and finding friends is hard so for me like I found a good group of girlfriends and I would 
ride or die for them you know like they are my best friends and my sisters i know that's very rare because i've dealt with a lot of my life not having good girlfriends and always looking at like a girlfriend group and like wanting that but i will say out of all the kind of different friendship breakups for me i think sitting down and talking with the person as much as i know you don't want to do it no one wants to do that no one wants to sit down and talk and like have this big fight but it's just so much better to like get out there and maybe there's something that this person's going through that like you don't know and maybe they're not telling you something and you didn't know about this xyz and you are able to kind of like resolve your problem and like be friends but i always always think it's better to sit down and talk with someone hear them out, let them hear you out. If you don't want to be friends with them after that and if they don't want to be your friend, then that's something that you just have to like accept and be self-aware of. But I think having a talk is always the better route to go when going through these kind of like friendship breakups. And there can be a lot of red flags in friendships and like those friend relationships. I think, you know, if someone seems almost like jealous or like makes negative comments at you or tears you down in any type of way like that's not a good friend and that's not someone who's like supporting you because behind your back they're like secretly like I don't know planning some scheme (laughs) like they they don't actually like love you with their whole heart like having a good girlfriend should feel like hyping each other up like you want her to feel as good and look as good as you want yourself to feel I think that's been a really big thing with Kristen and I who's my roommate my best friend like We both have our own like passions and goals and we help each other try to like achieve those goals and hype each other up. And, you know, I want her to like look good, feel good. She wants me to do the same and there's no competition. Like there's never anything weird when it comes to a guy. And that's another big thing. Like if you and your friend are like having a weird situation over a guy, that's just not a good friend. And you're gonna go through so many different friends in the different phases of your life but the only thing that you can really control yourself is being a good friend to them and respecting them and hoping that they're a good friend in return and if they're not a good friend respecting yourself enough to cut that person off and I think a good piece of advice for friendships is to give them as much as they're giving you you know you shouldn't always be the one that's reaching out first trying to make all the plans like they should mutually want to hang out with you and I think being self-aware if they are not answering you like you know I've been in that situation before where I'm like okay like clearly they don't want to be my best friend so like you know taking a step back and realizing that I think is super important and will help you find the girlfriends that are going to want to answer you and hang out with you you know you're one step closer to that once you stop putting so much time and energy into maybe someone who like isn't valuing you as much as you value them. And maybe there's someone that you're friends with, but you don't necessarily feel the need to like have a sit down conversation. And you're like, Alex, this is so dramatic. Like, I don't need to completely cut them out of my life. But like, if you recognize that like they're not someone that you trust, respect, etc., like that's okay to kind of just like mentally note that. And I've done that before where it's like, okay, well, I'm not going to share as much with this person. I'm not going to, you know, tell them all my dirty life secrets and you just have to like kind of take mental notes with your friends and I've been in a position before where I just kind of like get super close to anyone I'm close with because I I don't know I enjoy being close to people and I want to tell them everything and I think maybe sometimes you like rush into that before realizing who they are as a person and then you kind of like regret that and you regret like letting so much of your guard down in front of this person that like doesn't seem to be a good person anymore i really want to sit down with you guys and read the what would alex do questions and scenarios because you guys have a lot of input and a lot of stories and i want to hear from you and share what i would do but basically the moral of this whole friendship breakup section was i i don't know exactly what's the right way i don't think there's a right way in general i think it's kind of dependent on your situation and you kind of just have to like read the room and assess the situation but I don't think sitting down and talking with like someone is ever going to be the wrong thing to do 
I want to hear what you guys have to say about friendship breakups. I have lists of what you guys wrote in here. So we're going to sit down. We're going to do what would Alex do? Okay, please excuse um, this scene right now. My beanbag, I'm currently moving my sweat sets from my closet to this like outdoor little dresser thing I just got. So my sweat sets are all on this beanbag right now. So I'm sitting on a mountain of sweat sets. So I'm so sorry. It's looking like a hot mess in here. All right, let's see what you guys wrote in for what would Alex do? Hey, Big Al, this is a friendship question. What would you do if one of your best friends invited three of your other really good friends on a birthday trip, but excluded you from the invite? Not sure if I should ask her why or suck it up and realize we aren't that great of friends. Okay, this one is a tough one because I think that, again, we're going to have to be self-aware here. I feel like if she didn't invite you on her birthday trip and didn't say anything to you about it or didn't give you like any explanation, maybe you are really good friends, but she's like, hey, for this, like I'm taking my high school friends, like for example, like this specific niche group of friends. But like if she didn't say anything to you and you're hearing about this trip and like, you're not invited on it. She may not value you as good of a friend as you value her. And I think it's totally fair to like say something if you want, maybe after the trip and just be like, hey, like, I don't know. I thought we were really good friends. Like, are we not? And maybe have a conversation if this is someone that like seems like your like best, best friend. But if this is like someone who's a friend and maybe not necessarily like your best, best friend, I think that's a moment where you kind of like take a step back and realize like, okay, well, this person clearly doesn't value me at the same level that I value her, but that's a super tough one. Like that hurts. And I think, I mean, you already like said it, like you have the right idea there. It's like, maybe you guys aren't as good of friends as you thought, but I don't think you can ever go wrong by like asking to talk to someone, but I don't think you need to come off in a way as like, you're badgering her like why didn't you invite me like I'm so upset like it doesn't even have to be really about the birthday trip at all just kind of more so like where you stand as friends but again that's for you to kind of assess like are you friends or are you like best friends because like if Kristen planned a birthday trip and like invited three of our other friends and like didn't say anything to me um, I'd be like hello bitch like what's going on here but if this was someone that like you know, I hang out with, I go out with, and she's doing a birthday trip and didn't invite me, I'd maybe be like, okay, well, maybe I'm not, like, her best, best friend, and that's also okay, like, sometimes on trips, like, you can't bring everyone, like, I've had stuff where it's, like, birthday parties and stuff, it's, like, expensive, so it's, like, sometimes you can't bring everyone, and maybe you're not best, best friends, and, like, that's okay, or maybe she wanted to bring a specific group of people, assess that in your own situation from what I said, but that's probably like what I would do based on those like different scenarios. All my friends from college are in one of the girls wedding party and I'm not even invited to the wedding. I went abroad for 18 months after graduation and then I came back and it seems like my friend group has ejected me. Two of the girls are still friends with me, but the rest have moved on, I guess. How do I move on from this friendship breakup without knowing what happened to our friendship? I think with this one, like it is kind of natural that like, if you're not hanging out with someone or, you know, you're abroad in a different country and if you're not keeping up with, like, constant communication with them, it's natural that, like, the friendship is going to, like, drift. That doesn't mean that it's over forever. And I don't know, if you're friends with these other two girls and, like, you want to be friends with everyone again, then I think that's totally fair for you to, like, try and make a plan to hang out with everyone or to see someone from the group that, like, you want to see that you haven't seen in a while and, you know, say like, oh my gosh, like I went MIA for a little bit there, but I'm back. And I think like friendships do like come and go in a way that like, if you're not there, like it is harder to be a part of the group if you're like physically literally not there with everyone. Um, my friend group right now is like pretty split up between like Miami and New York and my one friend's in Spain. And we do a good job at like keeping up and texting every day. And I think that if you want to be friends with these people again, like there's no harm in like reaching out. Maybe it's not, you know, timely enough where you're going to be like invited to the wedding or in the wedding party. But I don't think there's any problem with like reaching out and trying to be friends with them again in a way of just like asking them to hang out. Like, hey, like let's do something like miss you guys. Haven't seen you in a while. Okay, so this one's basically about like friends getting in a fight, picking a side. Alex, I have two good friends that had recently had a falling out. The issues that they had with each other, I was not involved in, but they are no longer speaking and they're expecting me to pick a side. What would Alex do? 
So that's a definitely a tough situation because you're like put in the middle of someone's fight. But I think like you literally say to them, like, listen, I'm friends with both of you and I don't know your issues. Like, that's not my issues. Like, I'm going to continue to hang out with you and I'm going to continue to hang out with you. And if you have a problem with that, then like, again, like they're not really like respecting you. So I think like just sitting down and talking with your friends, you know, you can talk to them separately if they don't want to talk. And it's just being like, listen, like I'm going to continue to hang out with you, but I'm also going to continue to hang out with her. Now, I think it depends like what they were fighting over. If it's a silly little like girly fight that like wasn't anything catastrophic, but if like one friend like did something like completely terribly wrong to the other friend, I don't think it's wrong of someone to like pick a side and be like, hey, bitch, like you definitely shouldn't have done that. Like I don't like stand by you for doing that to her. But I don't know. I think if it's like they're just kind of not wanting to be as close, but you like them both, like think just be honest with them. Don't try and hide it because then it'll make it seem worse. And I think something to say to them is like, I don't want to hear about your fight and I don't want to hear like the talking shit about each other and like make that very clear. I'm going to hang out with you, but I don't want to hear you talking shit about her and vice versa. Like, I don't want to be in the middle of this. I like you both, whatever. My best friend of three years keeps hanging out with my ex-boyfriend behind my back. They used to hate each other until we broke up. Hmm. Am I crazy for thinking that something's up? What would Alex do? Alex would not tolerate this behavior. (laughs) I don't know. Like, for me, if I broke up with someone and my friend is, like, hanging out with them, I'd be like, just, like, no. It's not, no. No, no, no. I, I don't know. I would not be down for that at all. And I would not value that person as a good friend. On my scale, they would drop down to probably not talking to them that much. Um, maybe have a conversation with them and be like, this bothers me and like hear what they have to say. But um, I don't love that for you. Not Not feeling great about that one. So I don't know. Yeah, no that would not fly for me. Alex, I'm always the friend without a boyfriend and I always feel like my friends are pushing me aside to hang out with their boyfriends. I know to them the boyfriend comes first, but I'm tired of losing my friends over boys and then when they break up, they wanna be friends again. Have you ever dealt with this? What do I do? I have dealt with this where I've had a friend, I kind of brought this up before, but like stopped talking to me, stopped calling me, stopped FaceTiming me because she got a boyfriend and I, you know, after being declined on FaceTime so many times, I kind of just like stopped reaching out as well and we grew apart a little bit, but then, you know, they'd break up and she'd come, she'd hang out with me, we'd be back to best friends and then she'd get back with her boyfriend. We've kind of like drifted it apart again and then, you know, they'll break up and then she kind of comes back and, you know, I've said to that person like, um, this is bothering me, <laughs> like you're not talking to me as much as you could have. And I think for any girls listening that are in a relationship, like just remembering again that like you cannot be ditching your friends for a boyfriend, like that's just inexcusable. And if your boyfriend should feel like another best friend to you, so it's like, why can't you all at sometimes like do stuff together? And I think there should be times where you are exclusively making time for your girlfriends and having girls nights and not you know, just being with your boyfriend or having him around at all points. But I think there should be definitely a good balance of like boyfriend time, boyfriend time with your friends and alone girl friend time. I don't think you should ever get distant from your friends when you have a boyfriend. I think if you feel that way, like sit down and talk to your friends, maybe tell them to listen to this and maybe have them realize that like without even purposefully doing it, they're putting a little bit of distance between the friendship. So I'm sorry to hear that because that sucks and no one wants to lose a friend to their boyfriend. But like you said, boyfriends come and go and the girlfriends are what stay. So I think just, you know, telling them you feel a little bit like lost and not seen and want to do stuff together. And if they really hear you, they should make changes to include you as a friend more. And if they're not, then, you know, maybe it's time you go out and like start hanging out with other girls who don't have boyfriends and who want to like hang out with you more and go out with you at night. So this is one about like having a friend and like a big friend group um, that you don't necessarily like personally get along with. Alex, I have this friend that is constantly negative and if she doesn't get her way, she gets into her moods. 
Our friend group knows how she is, but I'm getting tired of it and just want to distance myself from her. The only downside is that our group is really close and the other girls won't cut ties because they would rather deal with her than deal with the drama. I don't want to invite her to my plans, but when the other girls plan things, she is invited. What should I do? I mean, that's a situation where... I've definitely dealt with something like this before. I think if you're not close with this person and don't see her as like a really good friend, like when you're kind of planning things and doing things, you don't necessarily need to invite her. I don't think you owe anyone a fake friendship. As for like the other girls hanging out and doing bigger things where like she's there, I feel like there's not much you can really do about that other than just kind of like talk to the other girls that you get along with. I go to private school and I have private school friends, but I also have town friends that I'm pretty close with. Sometimes my town friends use their school as their excuse to not invite me, but other times I'm invited. The thing is, all of our guy friends go to private school too, should I confront them? Personally, I think that's a scenario where it's like, come on now. Like there's no reason that you shouldn't be invited and I don't know. I feel like I dealt with this with like sororities. Like there was stuff where they're like, we're going to have this exclusive sorority pregame. And some girls were like super strict about it. And like other girls that I were closer with were like, literally who cares? Like we value you as a friend. We love you. Like just come. Like, I don't know if you're friends with someone, they should like want to have you there and want to hang out with you. So to me, that feels like a little fishy. And Alex would probably be mad and distance herself a little bit. My childhood best friend of 15 years got with my ex a month after we broke up. She doesn't know that I know. Should I confront her or just act like it never happened? I don't want to lose her, but what she did was messed up. Girl. Oh, no. (laughs) No, no, no. First of all, definitely confront her and definitely talk about it. But definitely stop hanging out with this person. Like, this person does not give a shit about you. I'm so sorry, but like... That is so horrible. Someone who's your best friend for 15 years and gets with your ex-boyfriend. Oh my God, I whomp her in the face. So um, Alex would definitely never talk to this person again. I'm so sorry. That's just what I would do. I would I would not be friends with them. What would you do if you had a friend that is really fake, always tries to tear you down, tells your business to everyone and you just can't trust her and you want to stop being friends with her, but all of your friends are friends with her and you have to be around her every day because of school? So I've dealt with something super similar to this and I think it's just one of those things where it's like you don't have to be best friends with this person. Like if she's there at a pregame and whatever, that's fine. But like if someone is not your best friend, like you don't have to like hang out with her one-on-one. You don't have to tell her your secrets. You don't have to like open up to this person. I don't think you necessarily have to like shun this person. And if it is like a school thing, like it's, it is harder in school because everyone just kind of wants to like go out and have fun and not really create problems. Um, so I think it's just like keeping your own peace, like keep your stuff to yourself. You don't need to like give this person anything really, but if you see them in a social situation, I don't think it's a problem. I just think like keep your peace and keep your stuff to yourself and keep your distance from her. You can't really control what your other friends are doing. And, you know, maybe if this person is not a good person, they will see that eventually. But that is all for this episode. Oh my gosh. Happy 2024. I hope that anyone who is going through friend problems or has gone through friend problems, like this is helpful to you in any sort of way. And I think really, really the big thing I want people to take away from this episode is to respect yourself. Do not surround yourself with people who you do not have the same values as because that that will come back to kick you in the ass. And always be open and honest. Try to sit down and have a conversation with this person, even if it's awkward, even if you don't want to, but you should definitely like let it out. I think so many things can get resolved by you just like sitting down and talking with a person. Why am I doing this with my hand? Okay. We love you guys. Happy January. Wish me luck on this 30 hard. Next week, I'll let you know how it's going. I'm only on day five right now. We're going to keep it up, keep up the health and wellness for this month. Um, But keep writing in for what would Alex do. Don't forget to subscribe and follow this podcast. Means the world to me. Earl girls, I love you. Happy new year. I will see you next Thursday. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,